In this closing part of our roundtable, my task is to summarize and point out some of the most important issues mentioned and help all of us organize in a way that we can go directly to concrete and specific actions that can make a difference and bridge the gap. So I thought that it would be better my presentation to be organized in four main pillars. One is financial. The second one is administration and operational. The third one is educational. And the fourth one is a pedagogical pillar. So I will present in key points from the speaker's presentation as conclusions and also as proposals, actions, things to do. So let me start by sharing my screen. So we start with conclusions and proposals. First pillar is the financial aspects. I picked this graph so you can see what is already happening. It's uh, from Eurostat and OECD. Economic decline in the second quarter of 2020. The economic impact of the crisis has already become evident. As usual, the most vulnerable countries and communities will be affected the most. What does this create? Something that was already mentioned, that general economic decline will unavoidably affect the socioeconomic status of many households. This will have a direct impact on children's schooling. And as Mr. Piasso said, rightly fully pointed out, that families with low socioeconomic status determines to a great extent the quality of schooling. The quote from Andreas Slacher from the German manager, manager of OECD of education is uh, very, very describing well and illustrates well the problem. In many countries, a student's school's postal code is still best predictor for the quality of education that students acquire. So what does it happen? We have income affects performance, and then performance affects the quality of schooling, and the quality of schooling affects the dropout rate, which rises. The numbers show that we have about, as Mr. Patrinos already mentioned, Unavoidably, according to the, to the report in August 2020, the models project a future earnings gap of 11,000 at the individual level or between 10.1 trillion for the whole global cohort. In high income countries, the projected individual earnings gap is about 21,000 or between 3.4 trillion on the whole cohort. So we see a large number of declining on the income of people. So what are the proposals? How, what can we do about correcting this? First of all, we can protect education financing and coordinate for a better impact. Raise the amount spent on education, or at least don't make it lower because a country will have a, a crisis. Second, we can strengthen international coordination to address the debt crisis. Devote budgets on investing, reinventing the classroom. So spend not only in the infrastructure, but also on the professional development of the teachers. Offer special provision for the unprivileged students and provide some financial support for recovery needs, like fiscal stimulus that should go straight to school, directly to schools, and permanent support, building capacity for learning continuity in future crises. Expand the definition of the right to education to include connectivity. It is very important. We heard it from all our speakers. We need to be connected. If we are not connected, we cannot deliver the, the service, the education service we need for our students and also for our, for our teachers. And leverage technology investments to save money and improve outcomes. You spend money at the beginning, but at the end, this money saves, a, this investment saves a lot of money. We heard also about very important um, initiatives, like the one that uh, Alexa presented about uh, the UNESCO coalition. These initiatives are very important and they globally offer professional development for teachers and education administrators, assistance to improve school facilities, provision of devices, tablets, laptops, mobile phones. In many countries we hear that mobile phones are a very important educational tool. Help with connectivity in areas that lack access and also do a lot of important research on education funding and try to inform people about the results of this research. Going to the next pillar, 
administration and our operational aspects. Here we see that leadership and new ways of inspiring and managing. The role of the leader is even more important these days. And we need continuous change in legislation that creates a need of daily week sick of information. There's such a lot of workload because things are changing dynamically. And the things are changing dynamically in different markets and business sectors that each affect each other. And they are setting the future along with the 7 to 24 work pressure makes people feel more pressure, feel more unsafe. So this workload on managers and employees has to be in some way made less. Digital promos users accelerates and everybody needs a good laptop, connectivity and new enhanced digital skills are needed. And also we heard that big data analytics and personal data safety is an issue in an area that creates a lot of debates because we need data in order to be able to monitor and support the educational process. But we have to have this data on a very safe and protected environment. What are the proposals on this pillar? Starting from the ensure strong leadership and coordination. We are all together in this and we, we should support the educational leaders to be ready in order to achieve what they have to achieve. Enhance consultation and communication mechanisms. Be close to your people and create initiatives for a positive environment. Support the teaching profession and teachers' readiness. Continuous professional development on an easy and tailored made way. We need to have it easy for the, somebody to pick it at his own pace, at his own time, his professional development. Not put together a thousand people and train them. This is very difficult and it's an old school approach. Track and support students at risk to, to, to prevent dropout. Be close to the difficult cases and give them more opportunities and support. Strengthen the data and monitoring of your service. It's the big opportunity of measuring holistically the result of your educational service deliverable. Now, from different points of view, we can use data in order to really assess the service we're providing. Collect and evaluate the data for individual students. It's very important to have the total information about our people, about our students. Remove barriers to connectivity. There are countries that they have many barriers on connectivity. We should remove these barriers in order to be able to, to help achieve what we have to achieve. And most important, probably, be fast and agile. Moving on to the next pillar, the education aspects. Here we heard from Mr. Patrinos some very important issues about the learning laws that, that it's been created. Limited capacity in place of profit distance learning and people ready to provide this kind of teaching skills. There is a weak student connectivity due to infrastructure. And constrained interactions with many technical and not only problems. So we have poor attendance because of distance education, more students get disconnected from school. And you also had a very interesting theory about the differential effects. That those with lower levels of schooling will be affected by losses in income to an extent that they won't be able to cover basic needs. As it, and we have education at many increase cognitive skills, educated workers are better able to cope, and we also know that educated people seek information about jobs more easily. So it's obvious how important it is to give access to learning to all the kids around the world. It's obvious because there's no other way of the, for these children to be able to find a job in the future. So it's a, it is our responsibility as education institutions to intervene and help individuals, to, no matter their financial background, to cope with these difficulties. Some proposals on the educational. First of all, we have to reimagine education and accelerate change in teaching and learning. Focus on addressing learning losses and preventing dropouts, particularly on marginalized groups. Learn beyond the classroom, anytime, anywhere learning. Offer skills from employability programs and connect with the industry and business sectors. 
Strengthen data and monitoring of learning. The big opportunity on creating a real personalized learning environment for every student. It was mentioned earlier, one to one. This is the time to get and organize better the one to one teaching method. Enhance uh, project based learning and mission based goals for the less privileged students. If you just send some homework and you don't see your student for a whole week, students get demotivated. They don't need just to receive something, they need to communicate, they need to act. And we have to support teachers in lower income countries for the professional development. They have little support. They have to be overwhelmed. They are now overwhelmed. We have to, to support them not to be confused. And create a blended system with different teaching styles where all students will be reached. It's time to gather data from the experience and move on to creating a powerful blended system where all students will be reached. And hybrid learning, as already said, can draw the best of both worlds. Sharing good practices, I believe, is very, very important. It's time for the education community to lead the way and join forces. Teachers from different countries, continents need to start working together in the creation of our effective teaching methodologies and materials. Sharing materials also is very important. Moving on to the, some more educational proposals that we heard. High doses of tutoring, boost one to one, in order to connect every student. No students should be left behind. We should, have, should, we should also have just-in-time learning assessment. Assess more times on a game-based learning approach and assess to be fun and give opportunities for more tries. We don't have just one final. We should have more opportunities of assessing and creating a different kind of a assessment sentiment to our students. Production of digital content. Produce and share. Fast, easy. It can arrive to everybody. It can arrive to every teacher and to every student. And we should build institutional capacity to be able to address all these changes and challenges. Teach more ICT skills. And fully exploit e-learning platform because the nice to have teaching model of one to one with the student laptop now became a must have. And one of the major problems we hear all over the world is that we don't have a tool at home, some way to connect with the learning experience. And moving down to the last pillar of the pedagogical aspects. What we have heard, we have heard about some very important conclusions that students were stressed and anxious. And teachers life balance was also affected because teachers also parents and they had at home their kids. And at that same moment they had to take care of the kids and sometimes they were 12 months old or six months old, they should also teach. And parts of this schooling became, you know, very difficult also for parents because it became their responsibility to be close to their, to their kids and become some kind of a parental involved in the educational process, which sometimes didn't go well. And also that the change in the way students interact was also very important because students go to school not so much because of math and chemistry and, and physics. They go to school because they want to see their friends and they lost that during the pandemic. So some students got demotivated during the continuous learning methods and they, their development of social and economic skills was hindered. What can we do about that? What are the solutions and the proposals? We need to use new teaching models to try to engage just our students more. Support the social and emotional needs of our students with more one to one communication discussions, not just during the classroom, but also different other, different times during the day or during the weekend. Empowering teachers, we have to empower teachers and give them support and opportunities to engage in professional development, but mostly to feel superheroes because what they are doing is really difficult. And reinforce the whole child development, giving more time to values and social emotional skills and a little bit less time to the knowledge part, which they will, they will learn anyway. Reinforce the feeling of community with meetings and several team activities. Innovate, provide, and try to do long-term solutions that would create a safe and a well-organized environment to the student, the teacher, and the parent. Don't make too many changes continuously. 
and be flexible when planning. And context is really crucial in order to be easily used by different teaching methods. We need a realistic and fair assessment due to, due to these special circumstances and feel that the system is not equal and fair because sometimes students feel that this new system is not so equal and so fair because they were used in a different kind of assessment. We have to explain pedagogically why this new kind of assessment is also equal and strong and fair in the new way of teaching and maintain communication with many different ways. Chat, video, telephone, live, online, one to one, one to many. My boss of all, as also Alexa said, be human. This is the basis of the whole pedagogical educational process we're discussing today. So I think it's time to grab the opportunity. COVID-19 is a threat, yet it is. But I believe, because I'm a character that I always believe the approach of the half full glass, that it's also a great opportunity. We must grab it. I approach issues in a dynamic way. And the most important, the first step we have to do is to change our mindset and declare that everything is possible and we will achieve it. Then listen to the voices of all concerned, students, teachers, parents of society, have a radar on 724. Be more open and collaborate. Share knowledge and experiences. Act efficiently with specific goals and strict milestones. Don't make too big projects and try to make micro projects that you can easily implement and see a result. And apply a 365 assessment in order to see where you stand and alter in order to progress. And having heard all this, I'm very happy today to um, to announce that Sophia, our own nonprofit organization, will give out for free our school self-assessment tool. We we'll give out for free to the whole educational community all around the world. And our aim is to support any education institution to fast and easily make a self-assessment and get ideas and proposals for improvement. With this action, we hope from Sophia that we are putting a small stone to this, to this important involvement of education and transformation. Thank you very much, all of you from all over the world, that you joined us tonight, today for somebody. You really give us the courage and stamina to continue our work and try to support education and it's difficult, but so much needed journey to transform for the better of our students. <laughs>